Hey guys, so last time I was talking about um, writing humor through presentation and using emphasis and the way you can use the words to create more emphasis. And um, I was running out of time on my video because I have a limit here on YouTube. And so I had this last thought that I did want to add and that goes along with that idea. And even if you didn't watch that video, that's fine. This is still something to be aware of, especially when you're writing humor, okay? One of the important things not to do, um, you want to make sure you aren't laughing at your own jokes in your writing. So one of the things that makes writing humor so hard is finding the balance between communicating the joke and over communicating the joke, right? Usually you just want to make it obvious enough for the reader to get it. Usually the funniest jokes are the ones that readers finish in their head. They, they're they the ones who get it, right? But we don't want to make jokes so obvious that it's painful. Now, when you do that, that's like laughing at your own jokes. So I can't remember which Harry Potter book this comes from or where exactly, but I promise that it came from one of them and it, it's a line that goes something like this. Do I look stupid? Uncle Vernon asked, a bit of egg dangling from his mustache. So the joke here is that Uncle Vernon, who is very angry and serious right now, is asking if he looks stupid in a rhetorical sense, but he does literally look stupid because he has egg dangling off his face. And so, I mean, did every reader catch that joke that Jake Rowling put in there? Probably, probably not. I mean, hopefully I won't have faith in people, but probably not everybody did. They, you know, maybe they were too focused on what was happening in the scene. Um, but imagine if J.K. Rowling had written that line like this. Do I look stupid? Uncle Vernon asked, a bit of egg dangling hilariously from his mustache. Harry thought it was funny. So, that moment isn't that funny anymore, right? It's like a laugh track. People use them to indicate to the audience, well, that something is supposed to be funny. But if the moment is funny enough, you don't need a laugh track, right? Laugh tracks themselves are funny because it's like the creators are laughing at their own jokes, right? So you'll join in. It's like, hey, a bunch of people think this is funny, so I guess I, I guess it is, you know, type of thing. So ideally, especially if you really do want to have humor in your writing, which is, it's hard to pull that off in writing as opposed to other mediums, right? You don't want to laugh at your own jokes. You don't want to laugh track in your writing. So don't laugh at your own jokes unless, of course, the fact that you're laughing at your own joke is the, do is the joke, but more on that later. And what makes uh, the original Uncle Vernon line funny is partly that it's a joke that the reader has to pick up on him or herself, right? What's not said blatantly is that Uncle Vernon does look stupid and it's funny. So J.K. Rowling guides the reader, but she doesn't point fingers and like ask, hey, did you get it? Did you get it? Right? She doesn't do that. Okay, so next tactic is one that I do like. I would call it fish out of water humor. So this is making the unusual normal or the normal unusual. So fish out of water stories are narratives where a character is thrown into a world or a role that they don't belong in. So it can be Giselle from Enchanted going to New York. Or it can be like a normal character going to a fantastic world, like Harry running into all kinds of odd things in the wizarding world. It can be a change of roles, right? Like in Freaky Fr Friday. It could be something like Daddy Daycare, where two stereotypical breadwinning dads have to try to run this daycare and they have no clue how to take care of kids, right? These are fishes out of water, and people love to laugh at a fish out of water story. So if, oh, and The Princess Diaries, I guess is probably a good one. Anyway, if your story has a character who travels to a fantastic world, then you can play up the humor by making the unusual what's normal, right? So in the wizarding world, it's normal to have pictures walk out of their frames. The first time Harry sees this, he's shocked, right? And Ron kind of shrugs it off and he says, well, you can't expect him to hang around all day. So Harry Potter, though, also plays with the inverse of that. When wizards and witches have to do things in the muggle world, they don't understand how to wear muggle clothing, so you get wizards wearing dresses, and Mr. Weasley, you know, asking what the purpose of a rubber duck is, and so it's funny, right? Um, I love this scene in Half-Blood Prince, the movie. There's this scene where Hermione is trying to explain to the witches and wizards at this dinner party what her parents do for a living, and they're dentists, right? And people don't get it. Elf, oh my gosh, Elf was such a good example of a fish-out-of-water story in this type of humor, right? 
Um, if you haven't seen it, right, the protagonist, Buddy, he was raised by Santa's elves. And then he goes to New York to find his real dad. And what's interesting about Elf is that Buddy is a fish out of water in both the North Pole and New York, and he doesn't realize it. Um, in most fish out of water moments, if not all, you're going to be playing with the character's innocence, um, how, you know, and maybe how they're naive for humor. Oftentimes, these characters will have moments where they take things too literally also. But your whole story, so by the way, your whole story doesn't have to be a fish out of water story to use this humor, right? You can create fish out of water humor in almost any story. Just put your character in a place or role they don't belong in. All right, as maybe some of you guys know, I'm a huge fan of The Office, one of my favorite TV shows. So in The Office, one of the protagonists, Jim, he transfers to another branch of this company, Dunder Mifflin, the paper company he works for. So he's this new employee, this new guy to this world, this branch, right? So it's a little bit like a fish out of water scenario because even though he's worked for this company, he's not worked for this branch, right? So in this new branch, everyone plays Call of Duty and he doesn't. And so there's these funny clips of him trying to figure out how to play this game and everybody's getting mad at him because he's making him die or he's shooting the wrong people or they're just like taking advantage of him in the game and just shooting him. And he's just like clueless. And so that's an example of how you can take, you don't need a fish out of water story set up per se, but you can still fit in fish out of water moments for humor. I also love, oh my gosh, I love this example too. Um, okay, so this comes from the movie Lady in the Water, and I know some people probably don't like that movie, or I know a lot of people hate M. Night Shyamalan, but I love some of his movies, so sorry, not sorry. Anyway, in the movie Lady in the Water, there's this scene where the protagonist, he's this full-grown man in his 40s, right? But he has to act like this cute little kid in order to get some vital information from this woman. And this isn't like a full-blown fish-out-of-water moment since um, the protagonist is willingly taking on this role, right? He's not completely naive or innocent about it. But it works with similar mechanics. So, to write this humor, you may need to sit down and brainstorm about what kind of clashes can happen between worlds and roles, right? And remember, you're playing off of the character's inexperience. All right, the next one I want to talk about um, is, I call it beating around the bush or playing with the not, what's not said. So remember how earlier I touched on that humor comes from what is not said, right? Sometimes, right? We want the audience to finish the joke. Well, beating around the bush humor does just that. So there's this another great scene in Half-Blood Prince. I don't know. Half-Blood Prince has some good humor scenes about, um, you know, Harry likes Ron's sister, and Ron doesn't know that, and there's this funny exchange about, um, Ron's, like, asking why his little sister, Jenny's boyfriend even likes her, and Harry's like, oh, she's got nice skin, and during this conversation, you can tell that, you know, Harry likes Jenny, and Ron likes Hermione, but they're not gonna say it out loud, and so what's funny is what's not said, they're beating around the bush, right? Um, they won't admit it. So, beating around the bush humor can be a great tactic to pair with um, sexual tension or relationships when you're dealing with relationships and humor. So, if you put those things together, soon everyone is laughing. Um, you can have characters talking about what's not said, like Harry and Ron, or the narrator of your story can pull it off, too. So, yeah, I have the Lemony Snicket example. I read it in another video, so I don't know if I'm going to read it again. But it, it's, again, it's what's not said that's funny. And I'll put a link to my post in here so you can read that example if you want. Um, all right, so the trick to the trick to pulling off this humor is, again, balance, right? You need to imply the joke strongly enough that the reader gets it, but you never want to come out and say it straight out. And you don't want to over-imply it either, because that's like laughing at your own joke again, right? Well, I ha yeah, I have a couple more examples. I'll let you look at them. I'm not going to read them on here. Keep following along for more humor posts. Get my latest writing tips at septembercfox.com. And good luck with writing humor, and I hope you'll be back to hear the next ones.